When I was in when I was in middle school, I uh, had to have orthodontic work and um, had braces, which most a lot of people do. And uh, I won't smile because my smile probably will be a little bit. Uh, you know, it's probably not as straight as it should be, and it's probably a little yellower than it probably should be now. <laughs> um, sorry, I think I let you see my teeth. Um, anyway, but I had to have orthodontic work. I had braces for several years. But when I was preparing for the orthodontic work, there were still a few baby teeth that were in my mouth. And so my orthodontist pulled out these teeth. <clears throat> well, one of the teeth, I don't know now in retrospect, because I don't remember, if there was if if he pulled an adult tooth by accident or if he pulled a baby tooth and there never was an adult tooth beneath it i believe it was that he pulled a baby tooth or i'm sorry an adult tooth by accident but in as a result i have a little a little space here in my mouth where there's no tooth and you can kind of see it here um and as a result uh what happens is is after you do all this work if you have this empty space your teeth will naturally push back towards it and close that gap in. Or at least that's that's part of what happens. And so in order to protect the orthodontic work, they put in what's called a bridge, which it was actually called a Maryland bridge. And it's actually what they do is it's, it's like a little fake tooth here like that. And it's got these pieces of metal on each side, sort of like how Maryland kind of, you know, goes up over uh, Virginia. And it has those on both sides. So it's sort of like, you know, a, a T or something with the tooth in the middle and these two brackets, and they actually cement it against the other two teeth next to it, and it holds that little fake tooth in place instead of putting a post and putting a cap or a crown on it. <clears throat> so what happens is, is that was what they did. They put this little fake uh, bridge in there, and it was always coming out. Like, that thing would never stay in. It would always... Um, it would always, you know, I'd eat something wrong, I'd bite into something, and that bridge would break and it would come out. And sometimes it would just come uncemented. Now, I don't know why, it would just, it just would. And what happened was, is a couple times I lost the little bridge. And the bridge, you'd have to have it remade, you'd have to have a casting done, and they'd, they'd uh, send it off and they'd make a new bridge. And it would cost several hundred dollars, and it would be a little bit expensive, and, and then they would have to re-cement it. But if you, if you found the bridge, if it came out and it was unbroken, they could actually just cement it back in. They could put it back in, and then they would do that either for free or for like 20, 30 bucks. I mean, nothing, nothing too extravagant. <coughs> and so what happens is, is that, um, is that that bridge used to come out all the time from my mouth. And that thing would come out, and I would, and I would you know, be like, you know, I, I would be worried about it, because I didn't have a lot of money. I was in grad school, and um, I, and not that I would want to spend several hundred dollars on the thing now, um, but it would always come out, and I would, you know, try to find it. Now, since then, as I showed you, there is a space. I, it came out years ago, and I lost it, and I just, um, it's been 10 years now, and my teeth have, move back a little bit, but not enough that I think it's worth uh, the constant battle to have that thing in my mouth. So, um, anyway, but it would come out. And as a result, during that time, I used to have these dreams. And it was weird. I would have these dreams sometimes that while I was sleeping or while I was doing something, that my bridge had come out. And I would wake up and I would have had this very vivid dream that during the sleep at some point I woke up and I was kind of half awake and that the bridge had come out and that I could feel it in my mouth. And I knew what it was like to have this thing come out. I knew what it was like. I can now know what it's like to put my tongue into that space between the teeth. It used to be like a little cement residue that would be left. And I knew what it was like to feel that cement residue still on my tooth. And I used to be able to know, you know, the, all these things. And so what happens is, is that um is that they um <clears throat> is that as a result of that i used to i used to you know have a pretty good idea of what it was like to have that uh tooth come out and i would have these dreams and they were so realistic that sometimes i woke up and i actually thought that during the night my bridge had come out and i would wake up and i would go oh crap that thing came out and i would begin looking and i would i would lift up the pillow and I'd see if it was under there and I'd get down on the ground and see if it fell off to the side of the bed. I'd pull the covers back and make sure, you know, it hadn't just come out because I'd have this dream that it had come out and it had fallen out of my mouth. 
and I was looking all over. And I remember a couple times I was actually on the ground looking to see if it had fallen out and somehow rolled underneath the bed. And I thought, well, maybe it didn't come out. And I put my tongue there where the empty space, that opening is, and sure enough, my bridge would still be in there. Now, all that's to say that my mind was able to create a dream so realistic that I was able to believe that my bridge had come out, that I had had a physical part of my body disappear, right? And I was able to have a dream so realistic that I actually believed that this was the case. And I'm sure everybody's had a vivid dream, and they woke up and they had questions about what was actually real, if, if reality was as they thought it was. <clears throat> and so what happens here is with this is that I, I use that to say that that's essentially what metaphysics is getting at. Is it's getting at this question of what's really real. I mean, after all, we can have dreams that are very realistic. So how do I know I'm actually real right now? How do I know that I'm actually, you know, I'm not just dreaming that I'm presenting this, that I'm actually here in this room presenting this information? How do I actually know that anything is, is actually real? Um, you know, if I can have dreams that are so realistic, how do I know that I'm not just dreaming at any given minute? And so that's essentially what metaphysics is getting at, is it's getting at how do I know what is real is real? But it can also go beyond that to ask questions like, are there ghosts? Are there gods? You know, is how is reality real? Um, and it can get into questions about physics, such as, um, you know, in uh, quantum physics, you know, what is real is oftentimes somewhat questionable. It's kind of a crapshoot. And so, you know, how is our reality? What is actually real and what is actually not real?